Hello everybody, welcome back. Let's have a look at the charts then, shall we? Everything's pumping, continuing to, to rally like an absolute mother. So, I mean, the only thing we can really do now, um, if anything, I mean, the most important thing to do for, is what I've been saying for the, well, I suppose for the last couple of months, but certainly for the last couple of weeks. This is the easiest part of the market, right? We've allocated, we should just allow for everything to continue to play. Most of us, I'm sure, have been in from lower levels than this. So, really, it's just a fun, nice time. And uh, the only thing, I suppose, to cause of any concern would be to look on the higher term time frames for signs of weakness. And you're not getting that. In fact, you're not even getting it on the lower term time frames for Bitcoin. So, it does appear that we're just going to keep going up. Now, that doesn't mean anyone should FOMO. I'm getting a lot of DMs about, is it too late to buy? Is it too late to buy? I mean, personally, I have a rule which is to never FOMO, and depending on, I mean, there isn't really any, there is no way that you could consider this not FOMO if you were to buy on anything. We've had the breakout, not just of the um, the downtrend for, for, for Bitcoin, which has been long, drawn out, significant, but also very neat and tidy. So tops, tops, bottoms, tops, tops, bottoms, tops, bottoms, bottoms, tops, breakouts. So it's been very neat and tidy. It reminds me of the S&P in, uh, in the bear market of 2022. Um, so it, it looks really neat, and as far as I'm concerned, it's it's a full-on massive breakout. But that doesn't mean that it can't pop at some point, you know, over the next couple of weeks or so, and maybe come back into the 70s, maybe even come back down to the 60s. You know, over the next couple couple of weeks, couple of months, who knows? There is no signs of um, of that happening right now. And if it does drop, and it drops significantly, it's likely to get bought straight back up again. Um, so I suppose in that sense, large dips mostly are for buying if you can establish decent entry points based, on, as far as I'm concerned, on horizontals or moving averages. Based on this daily here, the first move, moving average of significance is all the way down at 79. It was only a couple of days back, certainly last week, the $79,000 felt like a dream. Now, that is the first area of support if we were to pull back. I know, it's crazy, right? It's absolutely crazy. Ethereum, based on the weekly, doing its golden cross retest, finally breaking out, moving up to the top of the band. Not as bullish as Bitcoin as far as its own setup is concerned, but it's still bullish massively. Even XRP is having a good try, above all moving averages on the weekly at this point, finding a rejection around 67. Dogecoin, well, I mean... <sighs> Well, you know, there's, what, what else is there to say, <laughs> you know, and just having a look at some of these others, you know, a ship is obviously one of the better charts based on a weekly, we've always recognised that for what it was over the last couple of months since reclaiming the 20 moving average and now look at it, it's moving onwards and uh, looking to retest some of these areas and maybe even a new all time high. Now, just because you hear the words new all-time high and Bitcoin 100,000 and, you know, uh, you know, supports, breakouts, momentum, no overheated, blah, blah, blah. Everything does look bullish. I have to stress, you know, FOMO in is, is, is dangerous. And part of that, um, part of this move that we're seeing right now is FOMO. A lot of people have been left behind, I think. That's why I kept on trying to put across to everybody you know, it's just a matter of time now, you know, the overall projection for that total too was relatively clear and, um, and uh, you know, it's not anything that I hadn't brought up on this channel at least a couple of times a week, almost every time on the Patreon throughout the summer, we were talking about, you know, dollar cost average into this, you know, the summer is the consolidation towards the end of this year into next year is going to be the breakout and it's happened so quick that it certainly feels like it has left a lot of people behind. You know, the, the, a good metric for me is actually being, you know, the host of a Telegram channel, you know. And I get all these DMs now saying, is it too late to buy? Where shall I buy? You know, you know, what's the support? What's this, that and the other? And I'm like, you know, it's, you know, everybody has their own trading technique. But looking at things on a weekly, you know, we really should have allocated uh, at this point. And so for me to try and say, oh, here's a support based on a parabolic move, because this is parabolic, you know, you, you might not feel like it is, but it is parabolic. It doesn't offer any entry point whatsoever for anybody trying to get in at this point right now. And if uh, if people buy, then they, all they do is increase the green candle on the FOMO. Now, when you get giant moves like this, just like if you'd see a giant move on um, in, in, a, in a form of a downtrend, you're, you're broken outside of a Bollinger Band. You know, Bollinger Band strategy suggests that 95% of price action takes place within the band. Bands expand, but at the moment we're outside of the band 
and I would guarantee, no, not guarantee, but I would, I would imagine we're outside of the bands on every time frame, on every chart. So with that comes the expectation that we'll be sucked back in it at some point soon. But I mean, you know, looking at just, I mean, we're just here on SHIB at the moment, but look, SHIB stretched right outside of the Bollinger Band and then spent months going back down, you know, being withdrawn back into at least the centre range and we lost that and continued down. You know, this is just a, the nature of... Um, the nature of the Bollinger Band strategy. Here's a very simple indicator. I might even upload that one tutorial to my normal YouTube because it's on the Patreon for Patreon members, but I suppose it's such a simple strategy, I think it's worth putting on there, so I might upload that uh, tomorrow. Uh, for Just just from, tra from a training uh, perspective, you know, a tutorial perspective. So back to Bitcoin, for instance. Um, the RSA is hot. Some people might call that, you know, overbought. Uh, in the absence of bearish divergence, I would say that it's it can just continue to go higher. Um, I would expect Bitcoin to fizzle out when it's ready. There is no way to say where it's going to go. Ninety thousand is a round number. Did we just reach that? Yeah, we did. We just reached that. So this is this is going to be the nature of it. You're going to reach round numbers. We saw it and we see it almost all the time. And the last bull market, not the last one, the one prior to that, the peak was twenty thousand. So it's a nice round number where a bear market began. You know, so these these things are relatively neat and tidy. And I, you know, ninety thousand getting a pullback, no big surprise there. A hundred thousand, I would expect a big pullback around there. Maybe even front running that as well. Uh, and that big pullback would be relatively big. You know, we're talking. You know, maybe you could even assume a forty percent pullback from around those levels. That would be a 22.5% down to the 77 and all the way down to the trend line here, 32. That's not the biggest pullback you've ever seen, is it? That's standard crypto behavior. So when, if and when that were to happen, you can imagine the memes, it's over, everything's over, it's finished. Oh my God, rug pull, dead, uh, destruction. But actually, from a trading perspective, um, it's actually perfectly normal. You're looking to be reunited with moving averages, each one of these on the way down, including the gold crosses down here, which at that point probably would have ended up um, surfing the outer rim of this uh, trend line, which could honestly and easily get retested. So this is why you know, I always try to say to people, don't FOMO. You've got to buy when nobody else wants it. You've got to sell when everybody wants it, right? So it would appear that everybody wants it right now, but we don't know how high it's going to go. Um, and for altcoins, you know, it's it can really continue to go much, much higher, much, much higher. But there will come a day <laughs> when when the bubble pops. And I don't mean creating a bear market, but I mean one day uh, after these giant moves like this, there will come a day where, where you'll probably wake up and you'll see it's down 20, 30, 40 percent in a day. And uh, what that what that means is that your portfolio is down 20, 30, 40 percent in a day. This is all part of a giant huddle strategy for those who are employing that method, really. And, and I suggest that that is probably the better way to do it, which is why we were talking about the biggest trades are going to be the ones that are allocated throughout this portion around here of the, of the bear market towards the end of the summer. It's not even a bear market, really. But, you know, towards the end of the summer, July, August, September, you know, these were the areas to establish entry points for, for everything, really. And now, if you are in on those, whether you decide to sell here, I'll sell tomorrow, I'll sell next week, uh, when we create, if and when we create higher highs. That's fine, they're successful trades, don't beat yourself up if you didn't sell the peak or if there's more to be had. That's money, that's profit, that's what it's all about. If you intend on keeping it for the duration of what I consider the cycle to be, that's also a perfectly good strategy and one that I'm looking to largely employ this, this time around. Uh, which means I believe we're going to reach a peak somewhere around September next year. Which means that I'm going to have to be subject to, and you also, subject to those 40% pullbacks. Which means, you know, if you have, you know, at some point, let's just say your portfolio is peaking at $100,000, and then you see a 40% pullback, you're down to 60, that's $40,000 you'll see uh, wiped off your portfolio until we get picked back up again and move back up to a higher high and continuation and further highs after that. So these, and that, that is a tricky thing for a lot of people to do because you can teach people indicators this is something i've i've recognized over the years uh, you know doing um, the patreon tutorial services 
is that you can teach people how to use indicators. You can teach people bollage bands, moving averages, MACDs. You know, you can teach people everything. The itchy cloud. You can teach them everything, but what you can't teach them is the emotional resilience to handle a long-standing, volatile market like crypto. There's a couple of things that we can think about which might help a little bit, you know, and that's confidence within the indicators themselves. Now, this is a big breakout. We've managed to reclaim this area. I thought we were going to get rejected from that. You can see a perfect retest of that in continuation. So it looks to me like we've already hit the, the next level over here, which is this candle body high. Uh, and look, it's perfect. So far, it's perfect. So we might have already reached a peak. But I would have also have said that last week when we saw this. I thought, okay, we might have probably even reached a peak. Every resistance, you should expect rejection at that resistance. But this one broke and retested and gone up to the next resistance where we've, where we've um, rejected from as of today. Very early, you know. Um, if we could, do get a rejection from here, maybe back down to here, maybe even down to here, we, it, we don't know. There is no way to really say. But what we can say is that there is a pump signal that was generated on the weekly here for the total two, and the pump signal takes you up to the next area of resistance, which is here. So you might see a rejection here, you might start to see uh, altcoins come back down at this point now. We might have already reached a peak today. This could be the peak before the next higher low, which will generate the next higher high. So just be prepared for that, that that could be it. Now, with Bitcoin, if we just go to the weekly, uh, weekly had a trend signal that is still in play. We talked about that when the trend signal kicked in all the way down here in October. That was when the trend began on the weekly. The trend is also in play on the daily. The daily's trend signal kicked in all the way over here in October, mid-October. So the trend signals are all still in play for Bitcoin. Um, now the trends will cancel out if this blue moving average crosses this red, the conversion baseline. That will be the uh, cancellation of, of this particular portion of the trend. doesn't mean it can't go higher. It just means that entry points from the trend signal back down here at 64 will have ended around <coughs> yeah, wherever it ends. But the weekly one is still in play. So overall, it does look like continuation is the name of the game, but that does not mean it's not, it's not without big moves down. So entry points for anybody who's looking to get in will probably need to wait for the large pullback and make sure that Bitcoin is is not just pulling back and go, oh, we're down 5% now, the 5% is not enough. Um, you know, you're basing this on a daily at a minimum. A 10%, a 10.5% move down to $79,000 would probably be the first area of, of opportunity. Um, and uh, you could imagine the nature of a pullback from these levels could be pretty dramatic. And so a 10 exponential, as much as it is, certainly is, an area to get picked up from, it might not hold. You might come down to 77, you might even come down to wherever this 20 and the 21 moving average is, which is currently around 75, 73. So look, I mean, I suppose another way to, to interpret it uh, or to try and get the message across is that parabolic moves um, render the technicals uh, not obsolete, but less useful because it's an emotionally driven move. So this is not a, uh, I mean, for us, we entered in, you know, from a rational perspective when the market was giving signals of reversal and momentum. And also from a time perspective, we always expected this area to uh, to be the time where it broke out because of the fractal that we've had overlaid throughout the whole of this year, giving us that edge uh, and the confidence to to buy into uh, altcoins and, and, and whatever um, from lower prices. But, you know, all, all I'm trying to say is that this is an emotionally driven piece of price action. Um, and uh, because it's an emotionally driven piece of price action, we don't know where the top will be. And we don't know how significant the pullback will be. We don't know where it will come from. We don't know how high it will go. Because people are trading based on emotions. They're just buying. They're buying. They're not looking at moving averages. They're not looking at overheated money flow indexes. They're not looking at volume. They're not looking at momentum. They're not looking at anything. All they're look thinking at is... I am missing out. I must buy right now. I am missing out. I should have bought before and now I'm missing out. She says, that is a dangerous mindset to have. Because if you want to make money, you really do have to buy when nobody wants it. Uh, you cannot, cannot justify buying a move like this. You just can't. It's just not something you can do. So I'm here to ruin the party for everybody. Uh, everybody's going to be tuned in to my channel or, or texting me or DMing me or joining Patreons and stuff. 
looking for me to help them say buy this right now and I, I'm you know I can't I can't and anybody that is saying that is they're not they're not leading you off a cliff but you know it's an attractive thing to click on if someone says buy this now it's going to go straight up it might go up for a day it might go up for a couple of days it might go up for a week but from a risk management perspective it doesn't make any sense to buy a, uh, anything like this you know from a risk management perspective you you cannot buy when you're pushing and breaking resistances you have to buy at supports that is the nature of it and this is where people go wrong this is why most people get wrecked in trading or in crypto specifically because it's so volatile I move for 40 percent down from let's just say oh I've got a thousand dollars I'm gonna put it into something now it comes down 40 percent you're not gonna yeah, you know, that's going to take some emotional resilience in the first place. Just to first of all recognize what you've done was incorrect, uh, and um, and then hopefully sustain any further pullback beyond um, forty two percent. Because well, believe me, you know, so we look at these things twice a week on the Patreon. Some altcoins only go down. But anyway, the good times are rolling for those of us who have paid attention throughout this year and allocated appropriately, and these are the good times. I would expect that for the majority of these um, entry points that we've had, uh, should have, you know, probably won't be seeing those lows again. But new entry points do not exist right now. And um, look, I put I put a video out uh, a week or two ago saying you're going to get left behind. You know, you're going to get left behind. So the last chance to buy the crypto, you're going to get left behind. It obviously, it's a bit clickbaity, but it, it's, it's, it's kind of true. If you get left behind, you literally get left behind. Okay, and from a risk management perspective, being left behind is better than losing out and jumping in front of a bus and getting flattened. Right? You know, if you miss the bus, that's fine. It doesn't warrant standing in the middle of the road and getting run over by a truck. That's not how you. That's how you will not move forward that way. Uh, so you'll have to wait, whether you'll be waiting a day, a week, a month, six months, sometimes. It's better than losing, all right? It's better than losing. So, so I urge you to subscribe to this channel, at least anyway, to get a dose of reality. I, I would also urge you to join the Patreon, so at least that way, twice a week, we can do these live streams, we can monitor the market. Um, I always encourage people to join the Patreon on red days, you know, Just tune in on a red day, not a green day, on a red day. Red days are the days of opportunity. Green days, they speak for themselves. Red days are when people should tune in and go, well, what is it that I should be buying and why, uh, rather than a green day, which is what can I buy, have I missed out, you know, where's it going to go? No. So this is a green day. It's been a green week. It's been a pretty green month. So it doesn't bode well for entry points for anything. So you just have to wait now. That's all. Just got to wait for a significant pullback into a significant support where we have evidence of a bounce and a continuation. And I think we will see that. But just do not FOMO, okay? That is the rule. Don't FOMO. You're not missing out. You're protecting yourself from losing out. Right, I'll leave with you there. No doubt tomorrow it'll be up another 1 million percent and you'll be looking back at this video and going, well, I should have FOMO'd. I could have been up a million percent. That's true, but recognize I'm not saying that you can't make money by FOMOing. I'm saying that you need to protect your money by not FOMOing. You know? Making money is great. Losing money is awful. Trade with the technicals, not with your thought, not with your feelings. All right, long drawn out way of saying... Congratulations to those of you who paid attention to detail and a bit of a warning to those of you who have missed this current move. Let's wait for the next lower, sorry, higher low to uh, to establish entry points, comfortable entry points. Right, other than that, like I say, subscribe, like the video, leave some comments. If you join the Patreon, great. If you set up a BY DeFi account at the moment using my link, I can give you $25 worth of uh, trading bonuses so you can trade, I suppose, with free money. Um, other than that, though, I just hope you have a nice day and take it easy.